right, today's lesson is on uh, molar mass. This is very similar and connected to uh, the concept of the mole. Uh, so we're going to build off of that idea from the last video lesson. Uh, if you remember that uh, we talked about a, a mole being equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if we have this many particles, uh, what we, we say is that we have one mole of substance. Well, if I count out that many particles and then I put it on a balance and I measure the mass, that's what we're talking about with molar mass. It's the mass in grams of one mole of substance. Okay, so and what we find is that this, this, this uh, molar mass is actually equal to the number on the periodic table. That average atomic mass that we calculated before uh, for, for um, each of the elements that's listed on the periodic table, that number has dual use. Uh, one, it's going to tell us about the atomic mass, and it's also going to tell us something about the molar mass. So, for example, let's say I take one mole of carbon. That is, I take 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, and I put them on a balance. That means my mass is going to come out to be 12.01 grams. Same number that we found for the average atomic mass on the periodic table for carbon. Now, let's say we do the same thing for silicon. We go ahead and we look at the molar mass. I'm sorry, we count um, you know, Avogadro's number of particles again, and we put that on a balance. We're going to find that the molar mass turns out to be 28.09 grams for silicon. Now, this can be very confusing because we use that number, 12.01 uh, for carbon, as the atomic mass. So you've got to be careful with differences between atomic masses and molar masses. Okay, so atomic masses versus molar mass. So if we're talking about an atomic mass, we're dealing with individual little atoms. So if we use the unit AMU, which is our unit for atomic sizes, then what we're talking about are individual atoms. So one atom of carbon has a mass of 12.01 atomic mass units. But if I have one mole of carbon, then I have 12.01 grams of carbon. So it all depends on the unit. So you really got to be careful with what unit you write when you're talking about um, you know, the, the element. So if I use 12.01, what is it? Is it atomic mass units? Am I talking about individual atoms? Or am I talking about grams and I'm talking about molar amounts? So this would be our molar mass versus our atomic mass. Same thing for strontium. That's the other example I have here. If I have one atom of strontium, 87.62 atomic mass units. That means we're dealing with an individual atom. If I have Avogadro's number of atoms, which is equivalent to a mole, then I have 87.62 grams of strontium. Now, why, why does this happen? Why is this number the same for both of these measurements? Um, it has to do with the way they set up the periodic table atomic mass units and the way they set up the, atom, the uh, molar mass. Both of these scales are set to carbon-12. That's the reference. And since they're both set up to the same reference, they both, tend, they, they both will have the same ratio. So it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm not going to go into it. Just kind of have to, you know, go out in faith that these two numbers will be the same with different units. So watch the units. And to be completely honest, we're going to use this one more often than we will this one. Okay, we'll use atomic masses just for a little bit, but really we don't deal with individual atoms. We deal with 600 and you know 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We deal with molar quantities, so that's why we use the word molar. Molar means that we're dealing with things broken up in chunks of moles. All right, so let's take a look at some more here. All right, so if we want to get the molar mass of elements, first of all we need to look at the unit, and the unit that we have for molar mass is grams per mole. Okay, so if we're looking for the molar mass of sodium, what I do is I go to my periodic table and I look for sodium. And sodium's here and it's 22.99. So what I would do is I would write for sodium, for sodium the molar mass is going to be 22.99 grams per mole. Okay, so what that means, what that tells us is that for 22 0.99 grams is equivalent to one mole of material, right? So if we have a unit over another unit like this, the bottom one is always one. So by definition, one mole has this mass for sodium. Okay, we can look up uranium, and uranium has, it's down here at the bottom, 238. So the molar mass of uranium is going to be 238 grams per mole. Okay, so it's the mass 
per one mole of material. So for every one mole that I have, for every Avogadro's number of atoms of, of uh, uranium, it's going to have a mass of 238 grams. Okay, so now keep in mind that this is a special number. This is this is not. You can have pretty much any mass of of, of sodium that you would like. So you could have 18.9 grams of sodium, but that is not a molar mass of sodium. Okay, that's that's just a general mass, and you know it's, it's not a molar mass. The only number that's going to be considered a molar mass for sodium is 22.99 so that's unique to to sodium only sodium has that mass that makes it equivalent to one mole okay now what do we do for compounds so for elements we just look them up off the periodic table for compounds what we're going to do is we're going to find the molar mass of each element that's in the compound and just add them up so for carbon dioxide since it's carbon and two oxygens what I would do is for the molar mass of carbon dioxide I would take carbon and I would find that I have one of them. Oxygen, I have two. So I'd go to my periodic table, I would get 12.01 for carbon, and I would get total 12.01 because there's one of them. And for oxygen, there's two of them, and each one is 16, so therefore I would have 32 for oxygen. So what I do here is I add these up, and I get 44.01 grams per mole for my carbon dioxide. So the molar mass is for, for compounds is the sum of all the elements that are in the compound. Okay, uh, so for, for iron nitrate, I would have to make sure that I knew the formula, iron 2 nitrate. So that's going to be Fe N O3 2. Okay, so to get the molar mass of that, let's do it over here. What I need to do is get my periodic table, and I need to start with my iron. Iron is 55.85. So for iron, I have one of them. So I have one. My oxygen, I have a total of six times 16. So it's going to give me 96. For the oxygen, then I sum all of those up. I get 179.87. That would be grams per mole, and that would be for iron two nitrate. Okay, so for compounds, we just add up all the elements and get the total mass, and that would be the mass per, per mole for it.